for what he's doing in our lives. Ever since we walked through those doors, our journey with Christ has changed. We see other things, we see everything else, but what's important for us is our journey with God has really taken a shift. Amen. So without wasting time, just look at your neighbor and say, obedience over convenience. Look to the one on the right and say, obedience over convenience. And let's go to John chapter number 1 from verse 11 and 12. John 1 verse 11 and 12. I'll read from this side. It says, he came to his own and his own rejected him. But as many as received him, to them gave the power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. I want to talk to you shortly this morning on that title that says obedience over convenience and when I was reading John I realized something when you read from chapter number 20 verse 31 which is the purpose of, of the book of John it says but these things are written that you might believe in Jesus the Christ the son of God and that believing in him you might have life through his name so if you read and understand the book of John you'll understand that the purpose of this book is that everybody may have life and not just life, but life in abundance. He says that in John 10, 10, that the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy, but I have come that they may have life and life in abundance. So John is different from other writers of the Gospels because he is presenting Jesus and Jesus only. If you read as well, you will check that some of the miracles that he records are not there on other Gospels because he is leading people to Christ. When you read John 3, that's when you also realize that he says that as Moses lifted the serpent, so shall the son of man be lifted. And when he is lifted, he will draw all men to himself. So you'll understand that his writing is focused only on Jesus. And that should be our posture every day to say that our lives must bring honor to Jesus. Our lives must lead people to Jesus. Everything that we do must point people to Christ. Hallelujah. Now verse 11 says, he came to his own and his own rejected him. If you read, you'll understand that when you read, I'm sure it's Isaiah chapter number 56. God speaks through Isaiah and says that when Jesus has come, he is going to be despised by his own. Not everybody is going to receive him. Not everybody is going to welcome him. So verse number 11, John refers to that part where he says, when Jesus came, even if they knew and understand Pule, who he was, because they studied the scriptures, they understood that a Messiah was going to come. Even after all that, still they rejected him. Even understanding what Micah chapter 5 verse 2 speaks about and all the prophets that prophesied about Jesus. But when he came and said, I am here, this is the time, they still rejected him. Many a times when we read and understand, that is why you read, when you read 2 Timothy chapter number 4, it says they read and, under, and learn, but they do not understand. So the people that Jesus came to at this time, they knew about him. They knew that a Messiah was going to come from the tribe of Judah, but when he came, they rejected him. But then when you read verse number 12, I love this part because the writer starts by saying, but... Now, if my wife says to me, I like your shoes, I like your shirt, but you know that what she said before does not matter. Even when you cook for her and she says, you know, hey, honey, I love the food. Everything was fine, but. So you then to understand, you begin to understand that everything that she said before does not matter. So when John now says, but as many received him. But as many received him, not because of understanding the scriptures, not because of anything else, but as many received him. That is when, when you read Ephesians chapter number 2, Paul begins to write and say that you that were far from God, but through Jesus Christ, through receiving Jesus Christ, you were now a child of God. So he says that, but as many received him, he gave them the right to become the sons of God. This is not something that you've worked for because you understand that if you work for something, it is not a right, but it is a reward. But what the Bible is speaking about here is to say the fact that you have received Christ, you have now been given the right to become a child of God. So, so Ephesians 2 verse 14, somewhere there, it speaks of we are now adopted 
to be sons of God. That means that the adoption papers are signed. We are no longer of the other side, but we are now of the other side. Hallelujah. Just walk with me. I know that the title is that side, and what I'm saying is this side, but I pray that we may reach to this side. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, we get to be adopted to a life with the Father who is a protector. This is when you read Psalm 91 verse 2. It says, I will say the Lord is my refuge and my fortress and my God in him I will trust. So you get to understand that what you are saved to is not just life naked, but it is life of protection. God is your refuge. God is who you can look up to. God is your protector. And then you understand that we are saved. We get to be adopted to a father who loves us unconditionally. Romans 5 verse 8 says, But God demonstrated his love towards us in this. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. This is the kind of love that John speaks about as well in John 3 verse 16 to say, For God loved the world that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life in Christ. This is the father that we get to be adopted into. And then you get to understand as well that we get to be adopted to a father who is a provider. When you read Psalm 145, verse 15 and 16, it says, The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand, and you satisfy the desire of every living thing. So not only are we saved to get to heaven, but everything that we require and need on this life... God has got that sorted. Everything that you are looking for and you are trusting God for, he has that taken care of. But the part that I want us to dwell on is that we are adopted to a father who disciplines us. Hallelujah. Now I know that when we read this scripture, we get so excited that we are now the sons of God. We are the heirs of the kingdom. We are going to enter through Jesus. Everything that we declare on earth, we receive, but we neglect the other side. Because now you understand that I've got to learn this fundacy now that yes, I love my daughter, but there is a time where I discipline her. So this is what we're going to deal with this morning. When you go to read Hebrews chapter number 12 verse 6, it says, For whom the Lord loves, he discipline, and whips every son he receives. But there is a side that we always neglect. There is a side that God wants to take us to where as children of God, we need to understand that it is not going to be every day where he claps hands for us. It is not going to be every day where he says, well done, well done, beautiful. It is not going to be every day where he grants us every desire that we ask for. I remember at some point I got to understand of a God who says no. He does not say not now, but he says no. He does not say we'll see this later, but he says no. That is the side that Abba Zolone don't want to get to. It is easy, it is an easy road to say receive your miracle, receive your car, receive your house, your marriage is coming. But when we speak about God disciplining us, people leave the church. When we speak about telling people that live sin and live a righteous life, because you write, when you read Genesis 17, God speaks to Abraham and says, Walk before me, walk before me, righteous and blameless. So he says that I need to see your every step. I need to see how you are walking every day. I need to see what is it that you are doing. Even if, if it is not well, I am going to discipline you. Because Hebrews says, For he who the Father loves, he disciplines. We are so stuck in a life of, 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 of milk and honey, if I can call it that. In a life of, it is alright, it is okay. But forgetting that there is a time that we need to sit at the feet of God and say, where is it that I'm going wrong? Where is it that I'm doing wrong, oh God? May you discipline me that I can be a, a servant that comes out better to you every day. Because as a son, you understand that I remember growing up, I had this friend of mine. He was a pastor's kid, Fundisi. And we became friends. <laughs> we became friends to a point that I, we used to do sleepovers. He used to sleep over at our house. I used to sleep at this house. It was that nice. It was beautiful. But I began to see something that I didn't like at that time. Because I felt that they are... Because there are certain days where he will take his son and go to the bedroom. And you'll just hear sounds coming from the bedroom. And you know that the belt is working in the bedroom. But this thing that is being beaten for, we were doing it together. 
so now when the discipline is now happening it is only the true son who is being disciplined on the side so I'm being left out because I am not the son in that house. So if you see the father not discipline you, asazige. But those that God loves, he takes you to the corner. He gives you a little hiding and tells you that this is not right. This is not the way we do things. This is not the way that a child of God behaves. Now we will do something wrong for this and, and he's the only one who gets a hiding. I'm there, I'm singing, I'm dancing. And when he comes outside, it's not, it's not a nice time. But that is when I got to understand that when the Father loves you, he, is, he sits you down and prunes you. That is why Jesus, when he speaks in John 15, he says, I am the true vine. And my Father is, 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 is the person who's there to take care of the branches. If there's a branch which is not all right, he begins to cut it so that the tree grows growing up. Because when growing up, we had a mango tree in Fundisi. And we understood that if this tree, if you leave the branches to go to the side, the tree does not grow growing up. But it is bad and going to the side but when you begin to cut the branches it has the ability to grow going up straight that is what God is doing in this season that he is disciplining you and pruning things that he does not need for the next season the reason why you are still not flourishing maybe it is because he's saying I don't need that attitude I don't need that kind of mind you have I don't need that kind of lifestyle that you are living You know, it is a year of flourishing. Yes, it is beautiful. But the process of being planted requires something to die. I remember, Bullet, I was watching Game of Thrones. There is a statement that says, what's dead may never die. So when we have died in Christ, that means that there is nothing else that needs to die. But him, he raises us up. He begins to prune things. Because when you get planted, it is not an easy process. Hallelujah. Are we still together this morning? Are we still together this morning? When you read Proverbs 3, verse 11 to 12 says, My son, do not despise the discipline of the Lord, nor be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects. So it is there again. You understand that as long as you are a son of God, yes, we see that we are heirs to the kingdom. Yes, we know that we are seated at the right hand of the Father. Yes, we know that we are now a royal priesthood, a chosen nation. But understand that there is a time that he will sit you down and begin to cut those things. Cut those things. Say that this attitude is prohibiting you to get to the next season. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The side that we don't like is a side of discipline. God is saying that when you read 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 3 says, For a time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But following their own desires, they will heap up teachers for themselves. They will have itching ears. It is the time that we are living in now when Fundis stands and preach about sin and say that we are living sin. We say he is hurting us. Because we are lifting up preachers that are going to speak things that will tickle our ears. This generation is a generation that suffers from, from itchy ears. Where we need things that are just going to be temporary. Where what you need to be told is that you are doing the right thing. You are going the right way. When you yourself know and understand that if Jesus was to come today, you are questioning your identity. So God is saying that a time is coming where they shall look for preachers that are hyping themselves, that are hyping their ears. And this season is already happening. You see that if you go to the churches outside that are full with numbers that can raise the 7 million in one day, they are being told what they want to hear. But they neglect the things of the kingdom that we live a righteous life. We live a life that is straight to God. We live a life of waking up every day and saying, Holy Spirit, what is it that you need us to do? Because when you read the Bible, it says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, so are the sons of God. How is it that you live a life where you do not honor the Holy Spirit? How is it that you live a life where you do not listen to the Holy Spirit? When you read the Bible, it speaks of David when he was anointed by Samuel, he goes to the, to, the, to the battlefield. His duty was to deliver the food. But because he is being led by the Holy Spirit, he ends up being a savior of a nation. How is it that you live a life naked? How is it that you live a life without listening to the Holy Ghost? 
Because when you read the Bible, Jesus says, stay here in Jerusalem until you are clothed with power. That means if you leave a naked, if you leave without the Holy Spirit, you are going out naked. So for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So God is saying to us this morning, yes, I need you to be, to be an heir to the throne. I need you to, to sit with me when Jesus rules and reigns. But before that happens, I need to work on you. So that you can be a, a son who is true and upright. Now I also understood something from this, that in this relationship that we had with this boy, there are certain rooms that I could not access, that he was the only person who could access. Hallelujah. We will play, I have the remote and do everything, but I cannot jump on top of the couch, I cannot do everything. And if he does, he gets a look from the father. If he just, because if you understand that when the father is constantly watching on you, every move that you make, he knows. Everything that you do, he knows. Because the Bible says that you know our thoughts from afar off. So there is nothing that is a surprise to God. He's going to be like, hey, we didn't know this. Because he knows every move that we take. Hallelujah. Obedience over convenience. Obedience over convenience. He's saying to us this morning, I need to have time with you so that I can work on you. I need to have time with you so that I can get you to be planted. Because you know and understand that if, if you are being moved from one place to the other, if you go and buy a pot plant in a nursery, the process of removing it from this side to this side, it is not an easy process. There is some death that happens. Even in a few days, it looks like it is not coming to life. But you, God continues to pour on you. He continues to send his word on you. He continues to remind you of who you are in Christ. He continues to tell you that you are a child of God and nothing else will stop you. But the tree, the tree is not coming to life. But it is a process of being planted. And in that time, the tree may feel like it is dead. But the father knows that I will continue to pour water on this thing until it blossoms. That is what God is doing in this season. He is planting us in this season. That when the time is right, you shall be like a man planted by the rivers. That in season and out of season, you shall produce fruit. That when things are good and things are not good, you shall produce fruit. He says, how shall we know them? He says you shall know them by their fruits. Those are people that are planted in Christ Jesus. You can never be able to produce fruits if you're not pruned. Because now the mango tree, if you leave the branches, it will hang down. And everybody, mm, everybody has got access to the fruits that are hanging to the ground. But if, if the tree is going up, it is only giving glory to the owner. That is what God is calling the church to this time. That when you get pruned and planted in him, you are going to grow taller and taller and taller. And that brings glory to the owner. So now the problem is that if we don't want to be pruned, fundisi, we keep on giving people fruits that are meant to be for God. Because everybody has got access because the branches are hanging down. But if he prunes those branches, the tree grows going up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The tree grows up. And that is what God is saying in this season. To say, I need you to be ready for what I'm about to do. But I don't need you in this state. I need to take care of certain things. I need to take care of a few things. That promotion is coming. Don't worry about that. That one I have sorted. But I need to take care of these things that you yourself cannot take care of. That, 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 that house is coming. That business tender is coming. They are going to send you that, appro that approval letter. But before that happens, let's deal with this. Now I know that David, you are anointed to be king. It is alright, it's okay. But it is not time yet. Go and still do what you were doing before. Because there, that is where I'm going to teach you management. That is where I'm going to teach you patience. That is where I'm going to teach you how to be a good king. That is where I'm going to teach you humility. Because no one is clapping hands for you on that side. But if you just jump from here to the king, to, to the seat of the king, you are going to think that you are God yourself. 
Joseph, I know that you have a dream and your dream is to be in Pharaoh's house, but I need you to be in some places first. I need you to be accused so that you can be in a prison. And when you get to the prison, I still need to deal with disappointment on you because you are going to help people and think that they owe you, but you don't understand that God is the rewarder of all men. So he's saying that you are my son, I love you, but I still need you to sit down for a while. I need to take care of certain things. When you read John chapter number 4, verse 34, Jesus says to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Now, I understood one thing that the synonyms that we carry don't belong to us. This means that wherever we go, we do not represent ourselves, but we represent our fathers. So when as a son, you go around doing whatever you want to do, they don't look at you and say, this child, they say, in Kanegaban. So the reason why God is saying, sit down, I need to work on you, is because when you go out, they're going to say, Christians of these days. So he, he's, he's protecting you and protecting his name. Because you are going to bring the name of God into disrepute. Because you hear John he speaks chapter 3. He says that as Moses lifted up the serpent, so shall the son of man be lifted up. And when he is lifted up, he shall draw men to himself. So what, what you represent outside is not yourself. It is God himself. The prodigal son, when he comes back from this, he's given a ring. And back in those days, a ring was a representation of an identity. To say maybe if they find him on the side of the road and he's dead and when they look at the ring they'll understand that this is of God. This is of this household rather. So our lives when every day when God is pruning us and preparing us for the next season it is also that when we are outside to, for the world to see I believe that's why Paul writes and says for we are letters written to the world that when the world see when the world reads they understand that these are of their father because Jesus at some point he says you are of your father the devil because you lie too much. How did he realize that because he saw what was coming outside of them so when you spend time with your father in heaven when you spend time with God and understand his ways what is going to come out of you it is not going to be things that are going to put the name of God in disrepute so Jesus spends his time on this world doing the will of the father he says my purpose coming from heaven down on earth it is not that I be glorified but that he is glorified it is not that I make a name for myself, but it is that he makes a name for himself through me. Hallelujah. Obedience over convenience. Obedience over convenience. When you read Matthew chapter number 26, verse 53 and 54, when the crowd had come to arrest Jesus, Jesus says to them, do you think that now I cannot pray to my father? And he will immediately give me more than 12 legions of angels. But then listen to this. But how then will the scripture be fulfilled? That say it must happen like this. So he understands that the war that is before him, God can just send an army and it is over. But then he writes, but then he says, but. So that means what is suitable for me? What is my comfort zone? What is my pleasure? What is convenient to me? It is not important in this time. What is important is that I fulfill the will of the Father. That is why I said obedience over convenience. God is seeking a generation this time that is going to put aside their pleasures for the purpose of God. God is calling a generation in this time that is going to put aside their satisfaction for being sanctified. God is calling a generation in this time that is going to put what pleases them for the obedience of God. Now I read and understood that just one legion of armies is equivalent to 6,000 men. 
So if it is 12, you do the math. That war was going to be done in two minutes. But even though the ability is there, even though the power is there, even though the access is there, he is saying, not my will, but your will, oh God. We need to come to a time where when your faith is being compromised, where when your Christian walker is being compromised for that tender, where you look aside and say, even if I can just do this and get the money to buy the bill, even if I can do this and get the money that I've been looking for but for the will of God I'm willing to leave everything just to fulfill his purpose I'm willing to abandon everything that brings pleasure to me just to fulfill the purpose and the will of God I'm willing to abandon my pleasures God is calling that time now where we are going to seek him and him alone because when you read Matthew 6 now I begin to understand why Jesus was saying that don't worry about anything that you shall eat because your father knows in that time when we were friends he never woke up worried about school fees so you know and understand that the role of God is unquestionable the role of God is fixed him being a father is fixed is not being moved but then our side Fundis only spoke and say that it, when, when, when we sin, it is not usually the love of God that depletes, but it is our love for him. So that is when you understand that if, even, even when you read Genesis, when Adam had sinned, the Bible says that God still visited at the same time. Hallelujah. But Adam was not there. So when we live to fulfill the purpose of God, we live a life of, of sacrificing our satisfaction. We live a life of satisfying. There is a certain statement that we used to speak about at AFM. It says, no cross, no crown. No cross, no crown. If you are not willing to go through this, there is no crown for you. If you are not willing to be put down and subjected, there is no flourishing for you. You are going to see your neighbors flourishing in the year that God has declared. But because you are not willing to carry the cross, you are not willing at that time to put your pleasures on the side. It was easy for Jesus. Even in the, in the garden, he says that not my will, but your will. If, if it pleases you, let this cup pass. It is not easy. Because sometimes we think that, no, it is high. I'm just going to slide to the left. But it takes blood and sweat. It takes a portion of you. It takes you being disliked by people, saying that, you know, there are certain spaces. Mfundis always says that if they accept you in certain places, hmm, hey, you are of them. But if you arrive, and then they say, hide all your things. Hide everything that you want to say. Don't mute that status because if this one sees it, she is going to call you out. That is what God is talking about in this season. He's looking for people that are going to set aside their pleasures and fulfill the purpose of God. Even if it means being disliked by people. Jesus was very lonely because no one liked him. I mean, even Peter, Fundis speaks, even Peter, the one who was denies him. Because it is a time of, of being set apart for God. The fact that it is, it is still comfortable right now, it is not yet, you, are, you are not there yet. Let it be a season of being pruned. Let it be a season of being cut. Let it be a season where you die inside and let God be glorified through you. Let it be a season where your life, even your marriage, let it not bring honor to you, but bring honor to God. Let it be a season where your obedience surpasses everything else that you do. That whatever you are doing in this life, let it be outside of obedience. Whatever you are doing, even if you are given Fundisi, the obedience that you have spoken about this morning to say dig deeper, it requires us to be dirty in that place and requires to obey because in that that time it is not going to be easy so obedience over convenience and we know that there is power in obedience he rewards those that obey he speaks and says obedience is better than sacrifice so what we are doing in this season we are saying God I am ready to let go of everything else and be where you want me to be God I am ready to set aside everything else and be where you want
want me to be. I know that I'm the son of God. I know that I walk in authority. I know that I walk and doors are opened. But before the doors get to be opened, prepare me to get to that place. Because this scripture that you read, Funisi, that says he prepares a banquet before the presence of, before me, in the presence of my enemies. There is a process of bathing and getting new clothes and getting ready for the banquet. You don't just appear the way you are. When you read Genesis, when now Joseph was ready to get to the palace, the Bible says he went to, to, to take a bath. He shaved his head. They gave him a new apparel. This is the process that God is speaking about. To say before the next season arrives, I need you to be clean this time. Before the new season is ushered, I need you to be ready. Because the problem is that you will enter to the new season with the things of the past. He says, take him to a certain place that he bats, he shaves, that he is presentable before the king. So if that happens, why is it that we just want to appear? He's ushering in a new season. We are getting ready for it. Get ready for it. And then the pastor is standing here. Get ready for it. And then he, he waves his jackets. And then when you fall, you feel like you are ready. But God is saying that before that happens, you need to be cleaned. You need to be washed because there is some certain stench of the prison. There is some certain lice that is from the prison. There is a certain lifestyle that I need to move you from so that when you then get to the palace, it is going to be better for you. Because not only that, you are going to sit next to me. So the world is going to see you. So I don't need the world to see you with all those things that are not right. He is going to present us to be a bride that is perfect and holy before him. That is what he says. When Jesus comes, he needs to find a bride that is perfect and wearing a white dress without blemish. That is what God is calling us to this time. Obedience over convenience. Stay there. Let him work on you. Let him prune. Let him wash. You read Zechariah 3. The Bible speaks of the high priest Joshua. Now you must understand that in the Old Testament, a white garment for a priest was representing purity. So now when the high priest is presented, he's wearing dirty garments and the devil was there to accuse him. God immediately says, give him new clothes. So that process of being taken out of that dirty life, that process of being taken out of those thoughts that are not of God, that process of being taken out of what speak, Paul speaks about and says, putting down to subject every imagination that exalts itself above God, that process of being taken out of that lifestyle which is not of God, to being pure and clean before Him. He's the only one who can present us to be clean before Christ. And if we don't allow Him, and just walk around claiming to be sons of God. You are going to be a son who just walks around and nothing is happening in your life. I was there with this boy walking together. Even in the car we were driving together. But I had no inheritance whatsoever. My place was not in that house. No matter how I cleaned and worked. Because we used to work in the garden. No matter how I cleaned and worked. And did everything they asked of me. If that man was to die. My name was not on that inheritance letter. So I pray and implore you this morning. That refuse to be outside. Refuse just to walk and not be with him. Refuse just to walk and not be with him. Maybe you might be here this morning saying, I need to walk with this Jesus. I need to walk with him so that I can too be a part of this kingdom. So that I too can benefit from this discipline. If you are here this morning and even if you are joining us online, I need you to say this prayer this morning as we stand on our feet and conclude. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Wherever you are this morning, if you are here if you are online, I need you to believe in your heart because that is what John says. He says, as many as believed in him. As many as believed in him. All you need to do is just to believe. All you need to do is to believe. Whoever you are, if you are here this morning, if you are here this morning and you feel that you, you need this Christ, you need to be a son of God. If you are here, you can lift up your hand 
And if you're online, you can also lift up your hand. The online host and the online people are going to take care of that. If, but if you're here and you feel in your heart that you need to be part of this that we're talking about. And if there's nobody, I want us to pray this morning. And say, oh God, we know and understand our identity as sons. That one is not moved, is not shaken. But we pray that, oh Lord, you may give us a heart to submit every day. You may give us the ability to stay even when it's not easy. You may give us the ability to sit at the feet of Jesus. Come on, pray this morning. Father, we thank you. In the name of Jesus. It is not a nice journey. The process of being saved is not easy, oh God. But you are removing the chaff from the grain. You are removing the chaff from the grain. We remember when you spoke to us, oh God, about the process of purifying gold. And this morning we are saying, oh Lord, for us to walk this journey and you planting us, we are ready to lay aside everything. And we pray, Holy Spirit, that you may be our ever-present help. And we pray this morning that, oh Lord, you may be there to guide us every step. In the name of Jesus. We thank you this morning, oh God. In Jesus' might.